Ah, I get the draw. That was so lucky. Oh, that was lucky. I was very lucky there, but we get the win. The gnomes are guaranteed two points in the summer league. Yes. That's how we do it, people. That was a very scrappy one minute game. And it turns out one minute plus one second increment, still not very much time. I was taking it way too slow, but it worked out in the end. And we go to the final against the Chess Bras and Mr. Eric Hansen. Unfortunately against Eric, I'm going to have the black pieces in the regular game because we didn't get as many fans as the Chess Bras, but it's fine. We've already accomplished something. We're in the final. We've guaranteed two points for the gnomes. And that's what it's about. Time control, not enough for Hammer. Nijahe. You have no faith, sir. No faith. Let's go, says TB and Gamer Gang. Well done, says Ghetto Porridge. That was too stressful to watch. Yeah, I wasn't being stressful enough, I think. I think I should have been stressing out way more. Great job, says Lionel. Thank you, Lionel. Didn't see that coming? Bloby, come on. You gotta have faith. Matthew is in the chat with the gnome emote. Look at the time you spent on Queen E7. I realized that my adjustment to the bullet game was not optimal. I'm not disputing that. And also, I kind of lost all my pieces. But, you know, it worked out in the end. That's the important part, right? Um... Yes, apparent. I think maybe now you can sign up for the for the team match. Regist uh, registration starts one hour before the match. Let's start spamming this link. Okay, my links, my Twitch chat is not working. Uh, someone, please spam the uh, the link to the team match. The, uh, for the gnomes versus the blizzards. I can see uh, Gamer Gang is already there. Paul is there. Uh, Sver has gotten an opponent. Sherlock, who did so extremely well in the... Um, he did so well in our practice tournament on, uh, I think it was Wednesday. Sherlock is representing. And we have Miss Lava Lava. Maria is representing the gnomes for this match. Gnomes have more fans than the chess bras. Not according to the... Maybe we've gotten more this week. But according to the, uh, the competition rules, we were down by 10 or 15. Uh, at the point which mattered. Okay, so I'm playing this opening against Eric. I have done this before. As a matter of fact, Eric beat me in the pro chess league in this line. I have not forgotten. So we're going to try to improve on that result. This is also an opening I played against Georg. Um, so uh, I have a lot of experience in this, this one. Thank you, Aquila, for helping out. Yeah, this is Eric Krishna. A draw against the speed demon Tang is always a win. It especially feels like a win when the rules of the tournament is that you have draw odds that uh, a draw counts as a win. Faba, I think you can sign up for several teams. We are not in the same group as Sao Paulo. So I think you can represent the gnomes if you would like to do so. You cannot be a member of both Minnesota and Gnomes for this match. But that, I believe, is the only restriction.
Bloby has an opponent. Uh, wow, Paul still hasn't gotten an opponent. Neither has Aquila or Daniel. Yeah, we, we have way too many Norwegian fans right here now. Bishop e3. I never saw this move before. I've never seen this move before. Should we try to trap his rook? What is going on? Can we try to trap his rook? If I go bishop d6, his rook has to go to h5. Now, Eric is a very aggressive dude, but at the same time, I feel like a rook over there might be misplaced. And maybe I can also get my bishop to e5 afterwards. But on the other hand, um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to try this. I think d6 was a good move as well. But this just looks like we're trying to punish the man. And whenever there's a chance to try and punish the opponent, it's very, very tempting. Alms, thank you for the five month resub. Okay, so he goes up. But I mean, I feel like this is interesting for me. He's going to have to place his rook on a4, which is a very strange place to have a rook. B here. I was not expecting him to put the rook here. This feels wrong to me compared to the alternative. So what I'm wondering now is whether or not I can play b5. It's a really strange move, but it's a really strange position. That's my defense. Strange move, strange position. You know what? We're having a good time, people. We're having fun. Let's see what happens. Where are you going to put that rook, Mr. Hansen? What you doing with that rook? Is that rook having an okay time? You know what? I'm just, I'm just going to keep going. Where are you going to put that rook? So he has now spent the last four moves moving his rook around the center of the position. And my hypothesis is that it's not the greatest idea if you want to win chess games to move your rook around like this. Yeah, so he played h3 because he's very concerned about my knight going to this uh, g4 square, which is correct. That was a concern. But I'm thinking I can now use the rook. I can do other things as well. I mean, I'm just, I'm bullying this rook. Poor guy. What are you going to do? Look at how many times I've forced him to move his pieces around. And he had to take with the king because he needs to keep protection on this guy. If I now can increase the pressure against this pawn, that would be very good.
Wow, he offers a draw. <laughs> Sucker. He knows that he's getting draw odds in case of a uh, in case of a tie break. I'm not falling for that, my guy. I'm loving my position. No draw for bad Canadian player. Let's go. Let's find some good moves here. Okay, probably he's actually going to move his rook again. Uh, back into the middle. You know what? I think I'm going to try this move. It, it goes against my instincts because I like to keep control over the light squares. But I think the advantages of forcing his bishop back outweigh the, the con. Okay, I thought he cannot make this move because I take this guy. Now we're going to figure out which one of us had calculated or understood what's going on better mm, at the moment i'm fearing it's him so i was planning to go knight e3 rook e3 pawn takes um but now i'm realizing that after bishop takes f8 queen takes f8 he can give a check and then check on d4. Yeah, it wasn't as good as I had hoped. So check. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have to give this check. He has to take with the rook. I'm taking back. He's taking on f8. Maybe I can do some funky queen f6. Queen f6 would be very funky. Uh, but he has check and takes this one with the check. Queen d5? Can I go king h8? That would be unbelievable. Wow. Okay, so bishop f8, queen f6. Can he cover somehow? I mean, he can check on g4, but then I take the bishop and I have a threat. Um... 
cannot take my bishop there. He cannot take there. Um, wow. Wow. Yes, I think I got, I got it. I figured it out. I still think he needs to take with the rook. Um, Aquila chess bras do not have draw odds. Chess bra have, they have draw odds in the, um, in the tie break, in the one plus one tie break. But I declined a draw because I thought my position was very good. And now it's just very complicated, but I think I have an amazing rook sacrifice or kind of, I have an amazing move, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's brilliant. Queen F6. So the reason I hesitated playing my knight move was because there was a check I hadn't seen in case of rook takes, pawn takes, bishop takes rook, queen takes bishop. But I have refined, I have refined my plan variation. And now I'm feeling pretty optimistic because in my uh, refinement, I, I found a, a move that is going to... I think is going to be very, very strong. It's a very strange, but potentially strong move. I'm surprised that he's still thinking. Maybe he has spotted my queen f6 move and therefore is considering taking with a pawn. Because taking with a pawn, I wasn't really afraid of at all. Because taking with a pawn, then he, he opens up a lot of attacking avenues against his king. So I'm amazed if he doesn't take with a rook, because that means he has spotted my queen f6 move, which I am so proud to have found. I'm starting to think he hadn't seen this knight e3 move at all. I think when he played f4, he, he hadn't seen this move and I had. So I was being optimistic on, uh, on, uh, in this, in this moment and, uh, and he just didn't really understand what was going on. Draw arrows. Okay. So rook takes, pawn takes, queen, bishop takes rook, queen f6. That is the move. It's an amazing move. At this point, I will be so disappointed if he takes with a pawn. If he denies me the chance to play queen f6, I'm going to be upset with him. But it might actually be best for him to take with a pawn. However, if he does take with a pawn, then I mean, he, I'm definitely much better. So it's a bit of a concession for him. I'm, I'm surprised he's spending so much time at this moment. Because I feel like the way he was playing, he would just see that rook takes is the, the way to keep his king safe. And he would go for it. Or rather, rook takes is the way that you still have quite a few pawns in front of the king protecting it. All move suggestions or comments will be uh, timed out. No exceptions. We're playing competitive games right now, guys.
In the chess broad chat, they are not allowed to discuss moves. I mean, right now you're arguing like a kindergarten, right? Just because the other team is breaking the rules doesn't mean that you're supposed to. The rules are no discussion of moves. And we will hold that standard, regardless of what the chess bra channel is doing. Okay, he took. Okay, I'm, I'm very happy I get to play queen f6 at least. The amount of time he spends now is kind of telling us whether or not he had seen this move. It's such a delightful move to just play right away. Because you're just dropping a bombshell on your opponent. And he's going, what just happened? And it's not a good feeling. He spent six and a half minutes, six and a half minutes on his move. Uh, and now I drop queen f6. It's going to make him spend a bit more time as well. How do you like them apples? I'm so happy he took with the rook. This is amazing chess. I think maybe he has to go queen f3. Get the queens off the board. But I definitely have the initiative in that circumstance. Actually, after queen f3, maybe I can just go rook takes f8. That makes a lot of sense because I'm, I'm his knight is unable to join play just because my pawns are restricting it. So I'm kind of afraid that he will be able to block off the position. Okay, I'm, I'm going to concentrate. Yeah, so he's trying to bail out, which I think was his only option at this stage. And now I have to make a difficult decision whether to take this one or take the bishop. I think I'm taking the queen. I'm afraid that if I don't take, I'm, that he will manage to block off the position. Here I know for a fact he will not be able to block. Um, 
Actually, maybe I can consider... Rook g8 would be such a monster move. Rook g8. That would be so sick. But I mean, he's struggling. How does he get his knight out after rook g8? Then I just push the H pawn or something. You know what? We're doing it. I didn't actually see this when I took the queen, but I'm very happy I did take the queen. Because there's no way for him to stop rook g1. So he's just going to have to take the pawn on e3. I will go rook g1 and his rook is just trapped in the corner. Yeah, he might have to go a3 here. Yeah, he has to go a3. Even so, his, his rook should be stuck. This is an amazing game. Okay, we're gonna do this. we're taking this one I, I don't think it matters where I put my rook I think he's going to have to give up this guy at some point anyway. So my only concern now is that he's going to play b5, b6 at some moment. So I think for that reason, I should go a6. Okay, where are you moving that king, Mr. Hansen? Ah, uh, he's moving it to c2, probably. That was a very easy solution. Maybe I go rook c1 to stop it, but then he's going to move his king over here. But I don't care about that. It's very time consuming. Maybe I do care about that. Kind of regret this move now. No, I'm going to win it. I'm, I'm just going to win the end game.
I'm just gonna exchange off the rooks and win the end game. Okay, now he's trying to prevent me from getting this guy. Ah, uh, I cannot go to the fifth rank because of this check. That's clever. Ah, uh, that's very clever. Okay, I guess I pushed the pawn as far as it goes. Oh, I won on time. Wow. I was not expecting to win the game in that fashion. But we have secured three points for the gnomes. Let's hear it. No, we don't have a live audience. I'm so used to having the Pro Chess League at the Goodnight Chess Pub. And that was worthy of some applause, I feel. That was a really cool game. Some awesome tactics. And a win on time, yes. But I think this is a winning position anyway. This pawn is in trouble. I think at the right moment I can use my rook to capture it. I'm going to have a passed pawn. This guy is in trouble. We're putting pressure all over the place. Congrats, says Lionel. Thank you. Easy flag coming in for Perpetual. Well done, says Neil. Well played. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And now it's your turn. It's your turn to help out the team. We are playing the team match. We're playing the team match against the Minnesota Blizzards fan club. And I want to see as many as possible ready there. Queen F6 was amazing, says Aquila. Yeah, I completely agree. Queen F6 was such a good move. Sorry, too busy rubbing it in over at the chess pros. <laughs> yeah, that's one way of doing it, Forked About It. That's one way. I'll celebrate later. That's fine. What a great game, says Alms. Yeah, no, this was spectacular. I mean, this was really, really good. So it's, it's going to be interesting. We're now playing um, another match against Andrew with a 10 plus 2 time control coming off this amazing performance. I'm feeling good about my chances. 